Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Tone Talk with Mark Uzanski and Dave Friedman. It's Friday night at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, and we've got an awesome guest. We've got John McBride of Blackbird Studio. How you doing, John? I'm doing great. I'm actually on the road right now with my wife. I do front of house for her and just finished the show. Oh, you do front I of love house? It. I didn't realize yeah. that. Did. Yeah. <clears throat> I oh, love awesome. live and I love studio and it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it isn't wasted on me. How great my life is that I get to experience both. Really. I love that. Yeah. That's great. That's you don't, you don't see that often where you get to do both front of house and in the studio. That's cool. Yes. Very cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm well, great. yeah thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. We're excited to have you um, and to talk about your studio and your life and music. Um, before we begin, uh, guys, we have two sponsors. The first sponsor tonight of our show is Sweetwater, sweetwater.com. We have a link below or an affiliate link. Uh, you can click that if you want to buy anything and uh, help support our channel. Also, uh, tonight, um, it, we're pr promoting for Sweetwater as Microphone Month. And so let me, uh, let me share my screen and I'll show you guys this because I think it's important to see it. Um, so there you go. So uh, and I thought it was appropriate because, John, your studio has probably one of the most extensive microphone collections I've ever seen. <clears throat> we love microphones. Yeah, I mean, you guys, what an amazing collection of microphones. So I thought it would, I'm sure we're going to talk about that at some point during the show. Uh, so guys, if, if you get the, the, the bug to buy a microphone during the show, please click our link and check out that it's microphone month sale through the end of the month for Sweetwater. Um, and then also, um, I don't know if you'll be able to see, can you still see this, that, uh, they're giving away, um, $9,000 worth of gear. No, so, I don't see that. No, it doesn't say that. Show that. Let me, no. let me, uh. Let me show that real quick before we. Nobody jump off. wants free gear. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here, can you see that monthly gear giveaway? Ooh, oh, oh nice. yeah, okay, okay. Grab your chance to win a nine thousand dollar microphone collection. All right, so you got to provide your email. Nice. Enter for the giveaway. It's free. Um, so make sure you check out Sweetwater, and then you can see all the sale on all the microphones. Cool. All right. And uh, I'm sure John has several mics that are single mics that are well over that figure. <laughs> I'm sure. Unfortunately. And you know, the problem is when I bought them, they, I thought they were crazy expensive and they just keep going up. I, I don't even, Oh yeah. I can't keep like money in the bank. In. It's like it investment. is crazy. Oh, yeah. someone came to me and go, man, you're such a genius to buy all this vintage gear, et cetera, et cetera. And I go, genius had nothing to do with it. I lucked <laughs> out is what happened. I just was... love gear and I love microphones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... yeah. that's amazing. Well, we're going to talk about all that stuff. Um, last last thing is our last sponsor is uh, fixpedalboards.com. So check out fixpedalboards.com, which uh, are accessories for your pedal boards and check out all the products that they have there and say hi to Tim, tell him tone talk sent you. All right. Okay. All right. With that said, thanks uh, everybody for, for joining us and John. Uh, you, so you and your wife, Martina. Yes. Own Blackbird studio in Nashville. Yes. And the um, bank, I guess. Yeah. What's that? And the bank, you know, and the, <laughs> I know and, that, and doesn't scare me. I've got an extremely high tolerance for risk for better or worse. Anyway. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Yep. You're in the studio business. So <laughs> yes, that's a fact. It's funny. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll make an occasional little wager on a football game or something. And someone will go, how do you gamble like that? I go, and I'm in the studio. I go, that's not gambling. This is gambling. Okay. Right. The room we're in, you know, the building we're in, all that. And, you know, but God, I love it. I just, I love it. I think I need that. I need the fear. I need, 
you know, because it makes you get out of bed in the morning a little easier, you know, or a little more urgently. Right, right. You have a, <laughs> you have a sense of urgency to do things yeah. for the day. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, what? I wouldn't trade it. I, I love it. I do. I always say studio, you know, running a studio or having a studio or working in music really is the best way to put it. It's a lot like sex and pizza. Even when it's bad, it's pretty good. You know, I, I just enjoy it a lot, you know, anyway, now, when did I'll you try not to make any bad jokes. When did I, I you know, I got Blackbird, uh, the original first building I bought in, uh, on January 15th of 2002. So we're 23 years old now which is uh, no, 22 years, yeah, 2002, 21 years old. Jesus, 21. my math is sucking. Uh, 21 years old, yeah. Well, that's why which we became is, musicians, you know, our math. It's shocking. My math. Uh, <laughs> my math. <laughs> yeah, my math's not so good. <laughs> my math's not so good. <laughs> Maybe the yeah, English, But at too. the end of the day, music is math, you know. Or, or it's true. You know, math is a big component of it, I'll say. Anyway. That is true. That is true. That's true. Um, yeah. So where are you tonight? Where? What? What? I am in Franklin, North Carolina. Oh. Never been here before. We had a fifteen hundred seat theater we did tonight. It was sold out. I'm happy. You know, I love it. The crowd was good, and the they have it's a nice theater. I should know the name of this place. I think. Oh my God, it's S C M A or something are the initials of it, and. Um, I guess you should teach me how to work a mic because when I look around, obviously I fade away. So I'll try to stay more on it. You know, <laughs> that's one thing about my wife. She knows how to sing in a mic. I've always jokingly said, uh, she can cheat on me. That, that's fine. But if she doesn't sing in that mic, we got a problem. All right. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's great. Uh, well, she has a long saying. career, so she should know how to do it. Yeah, man, I'll tell you, she's 30. Oh my God. She got signed to 91. So 32 years into it. That's wow. unbelievable to me. Yeah. First album came out in 92 and we hit the road and that was a blast, you know? Wow. Unfortunately, we really had to start at the bottom. The first tour was opening for Garth Brooks and, uh, and uh, <laughs> being in front of a lot of people. And it was a blast. Well, that's still mm -hmm. a big, I'm sure that was a big draw with, you know, opening for Garth. Brooks oh, yeah. Probably had a lot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah. Was, it was, it was, I mean, the crew used to joke, I'm triple dipping. I'm production manager for Garth. I have the sound company. And I'm married to the opening act. I mean, you know, it worked out. That was a great year. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I should have reveled in it a little more, you know. Now, are you doing sound then? Also, is that what you were doing? Oh before? yeah, yeah. I've I've mixed Martina since, well, really, almost since we met, uh, 1987, and um, I've done easily over 3,000 shows with that girl. And you know what? I I love it, and I never get tired of it. And I get tired of stuff, you know, all the time, but I never get tired of her or doing front of house for her. I'm really fortunate that our careers overlap to where, or work together to where we can be together on the road. And right. Both yeah. Still that's serve great. A, a, a purpose. Yes. It so is. I've got, I've got some front of house questions for you. So, um, Oh, I love it. Doing, so since you've been doing this for a long time, how are you seeing now that they're, the venues are pushing volume down. They want you to have quieter stages and are they, you know, you know, everything is way more regulated than it's ever been. And some of that is positive and some of it, you know, letting the accountants have all the control really takes a lot of fun out of touring. Touring in the seventies or eighties was still the wild, wild West. And I love that. But you know, I'm a family man and all that happy stuff. And, uh, I have no complaints and I'm actually mixing quieter than I used to. You know, what you discover is, you know, like I, I really am comfortable around say 105 DB 
but today I'm comfortable at a hundred and at a hundred or a hundred one. Um, the, the quieter you mix, the more the art of mixing comes into play really. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I like having a little and really look at your audience. It depends on your audience also. And certain places we grow up, we draw an older crowd and those shows I'll try to run intentionally a little quieter right. because they're there to enjoy themselves. You know, I, I, I don't want to have somebody sitting there holding their ears or something that would, yeah, that's not cool. Right. Or, uh, yeah. Well, that's now, good that you, uh, yeah, you read it by, you know. Uh, yeah. I've gone out and subbed on like some Greta Van Fleet shows and those were a little more powerful, but it, you know, it's a, yeah, a little more rock rock band. Yes. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and rock and roll, there's a lot of angst and anger and, and, you know, making a statement in that music. And mm -hmm. I really enjoy that too. I won't lie. And plus they're a great band to mix. You have guitar, bass, drums, go. Right. And yeah. Vocals, yeah. And they're good. Yeah. You know, I, I, they are. I they they really put on a good show. I saw them a yeah. few years ago. Well, I uh, maybe four years ago now, and uh, in in Hollywood here at the Hollywood Palladium at the time, and uh, I was I gotta say I went because they had a product of mine they were using, and I um, man, they were great. They were awesome. And interesting thing was every walk of life was in the crowd. Oh, they I know. Were from Five like to ten 80. years old I mean, to yeah, yeah, to seventy or something, you know. And uh, it was that was interesting. That was interesting. It, so and, it you know, really, really is. Yeah, it, it and now they're is. now they're doing arenas. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's great. I just I mixed a thing, a live thing they did. It's it's probably it must have been right before COVID, but they did two nights at uh, Red Rocks. Mm -hmm. And it's, I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube. So that mix I did, you know, it was, I didn't, I wasn't at the show, but they recorded it, brought me the tracks and we did those, the made one show out of the two nights, you know? Oh, so that's what, what they were, that's what they released on you. It's a live yeah. video or yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That's cool. And man, there were very few fixes. It was primarily just getting balances and uh, making sure the band was happy with tones and, and all those happy things, you know, mm -hmm. but man, cause there are live albums where maybe the only thing that's actually live is the bass drum or something, you know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> where Absolutely, bands will go right? in and replace everything, you know, but we didn't right. do that. I, I loved it. I love that, you know, I love it when bands don't play to a click when they actually rely on the drummer. I love that. Right. And they That's don't beautiful. use external tracks. So man, why not let it have a little grease in there and, and let it move you, you know, which it does. I just feel a lot more emotional listening to music that isn't on a grid or Absolutely. even has a click. Track. Hands yeah. down. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Huge difference. Yeah. Huge difference. Yes, there is. There is. What about what about the difference between real amps and modeling? Uh, have you experienced kind of work in front of house on on that? You know, a little bit, a little bit. We played around with campers and stuff like that, but to me, just like plugins, it's I haven't found a plugin that I feel is just as good or better than the piece of gear they're emulating, you know? Mm, absolutely. Um, I know it's a hassle to, you know, I mean, when you have like modeled guitar sounds, well, there's as many different rigs or, or guitars, you know, that, that you can emulate through one guitar, but I really would prefer to, you know, I'd lug around a bunch of, you know, a bunch Real of cases gear. full of, full of stuff. Yeah, I would. I would. Yeah. But man, yeah. I sure understand. I, I always say, I always say the bands do it for, uh, you know, weight and, and traveling and this and that. And I'm like thinking yep. to myself, so you're telling me that, uh, 
a, a, a pedal board and a let's say strip it down to a Fender Deluxe reverb is too much mm. stuff. That's really small. It's really light. I would agree. Mean, meanwhile, they have they've built a rack that has all this modeling and wirelesses and everything, and it's big. What is Huge. that really saving yes. anything? I don't think so. Well, not not in that case. Yeah. Yep. I I really, you know, and the great thing is through, I mean, different guitars through the same amp can sound night and day different and all sound sure. great. So there's really a lot of ways to get a million sounds live with analog gear, you know, mm -hmm. and the pedal boards. I mm -hmm. mean. They have pedals that'll do insane things these days, you know? Sure. It's hard to keep up with. I'm glad oh, I'm not a guitar player because there's, man, those guys, it's a lot of work, you know? And, it's just you know, endless endless choices. Yes. Yeah. There so are. You, you can get into analysis paralysis. Like, you just be like, I don't know what to, yes. I, I, what do I pick, you know? If I, if I was a guitar player? I'll promise you I'd have a Cooper time cube, the actual box and the rack unit. And I'd have an echo wreck. Oh, yeah. Those two for things sure. I would have for sure. Those are, we have them at the studio and they're my two favorite kind of guitar pieces, mm. you know? Oh yeah. And they were great on vocals too. So that's the fun part. Oh yeah, I, an echo wreck on vocals would sound great. Oh, it does. Did yeah. you oh, see that the Cooper Time Cube, like Shaka Khan on "Tell Me Something Good"? That's through a Cooper Time Cube. I never heard you that. You know, before. Joe Joe Walsh uses a Coop, has used a Cooper a Cooper Time Cube over the years on a lot of different things. You know, and it's just such a killer sound. I love it. I love it. Anyway, have you heard Have you heard that, Dave? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not overly familiar with it, but yes, I know what it is. Huh. Yeah. Well, the beauty uh, of it was we did a, I started this, when you own a studio, you got to do anything you can do to generate a little money. <laughs> so, I, you know, we have a school and we have a plug-in company even. We have, or we're associated with the plug-in company. We've done some sample stuff through uh, Slate and, and we've just done a lot of stuff. And uh, I started this thing five or six years ago called InsideBlackbird.com is how you get to it. But I just thought to myself, you know, everyone wants more access. They do. Whether the, I don't care where you are in your career or if you're even in the music business, everybody wants more access. I have really good access to gear and rooms because of Blackbird to players, producers, engineers, because of Blackbird, uh, to artists, because of Martina and the studio. And so we started shooting film, and then we did this for like three years. And then I looked at the quality, and it just wasn't. The content was great, and the, the it looked crappy. And uh, so then a couple of years ago, I went and borrowed a bunch more money, and bought good video gear or maybe great even and hired a, a, a pro video crew, which full time at Blackbird, we have a, a video crew. It's crazy, but we wow. shoot videos about everything studio and live. We're doing, we're out of our minds and there's an infinite number of videos you can shoot. So we'll never run out of things to shoot. And then we just launched earlier this month and, uh, so far, so good. It's, you know, it's uh, out there and people seem to be enjoying it. And I'm pricing it, trying to keep it as cheap as possible so that, you know, kids can afford it. And uh, I have a student rate that's $9.99 a month. And and uh, the general public is like $15.99 a month. But if you buy a year, you get two months free. So, you know, there it. it compared to other services that do a similar thing, we're half the money generally. And that's important to me because I have three daughters and, you know, 
everybody's broke. It feels like, you know, it seems like it, it, you know, and we, you know, we, we're on the edge most of the time, <laughs> but you know what? Like I said, high tolerance for risk. So here we go. Well, I but mean, anyway. it, it looks amazing. The, uh, you know, in, oh, the, the, you the know, academy. we're shooting and yeah. Oh, and with the school, I started the school 10 years ago. It's going incredibly well. We've had like four Grammy winners already, which is shocking wow. you know to wow. me i've never won a grammy can i cuss on this show yes yeah. you can usually i say i've never won a fucking grammy you know but whatever yeah. anyways <laughs> but i figure once 10 students have won or grads have won a grammy then i'm going to claim 10 percent of each of them and i'm going to say i have a grammy but there you go or maybe <laughs> i'll do a go. record <laughs> that'll get one one day we'll see we'll see because i'm never going to retire never i love what i get to do I was just watching your clip with Joe Bonamassa where he was saying oh, that, uh, thir- love three that times, guy. yeah, three times, not a charm. He didn't, yeah. he didn't, yeah. Yeah, he didn't get the Grammy on the third. He thought he was going to get it on the third time, but, but didn't. Happen. I think Joe will win a Grammy though, before too long. I really do. I mean, he's a I great can... player. Great guy. Funny guy. Oh yeah. You know, yeah, he's, he's great. Great player. Pleasure I to can't be around. Your wife hasn't won one. Is that true? Oh, she's what? only been nominated like 14 times, I think, but she hasn't, not yet. She's won one as part of a compilation record where we did a song on that record or whatever. It doesn't feel as legit. You know what I mean? But that's okay. Hey. You know what? <laughs> Most times, people though. are not going to win a Grammy, and that's fine. There's yeah. still a lot of great talent out there and a lot of great music. So that's the key. For sure. So, um, yes. uh, our moderator of the show says he's he's used Blackbird Studio plugins during recent recording session. It really helped. You know what? And as anti plugin a guy as I've been most of my life, I'm really proud of the plugins that it's a company called Kit K I T Kit Plugins, and they have they've done two Neve channels from Blackbird. Uh, the 1073 and the 31105. And they've done also a Motown EQ, you know, uh, through a, for us. And when I sit there and compare prior to its release, when I com- compare the actual unit with the plug-in, there, I get fooled sometimes. They, they've really done a great job. All the digital technology continues to improve, and I'm really happy about that. Because someday, you know, things break, things get old, you know, you can't find parts. So I love having something that's really, really, really close to what I experience at Blackbird. Oh, that's great. And I don't worry so much about, okay, if somebody, if the place burned down and the, the, Neve console, an 8078 we have in the, in the A room, there's no other 8078 like it. You know, I spent more money modding it than we did or fixing it. I should say than we did buying it, you know? So it's a, a one of a kind thing. And, and I brought in Jeff Tanner, who's incredible. He worked for Neve when they manufactured that console and he knew every issue it had out of the factory. And we addressed everything, everything that Jeff knew it needed. And man, it's great. It, it it's a great console. What year is it from? And I think it's 70, 75 maybe. Wow. And when that console was manufactured, it went to uh, Motown LA first. Then it went to Donald Fagan who had it at river sound for years did night fly and a bunch of records on it. And then we got it from there. So, and then we turned it upside down for six months and spent 300 grand making it perfect. (laughs) And I love that desk. I really, really love that desk. I do. (laughs) I bet. And you know, we have APIs, we have SSLs, but you know, I'm a Neve and API fan. Big time. I love how many rooms are at Blackbird now? Nine. We have nine, nine rooms. 
Yes. You're taking, you're taking a how. whole block, aren't you? Man. <laughs> well, we have three buildings, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it, it's turned into a little kind of compound in a way. The, the great things that happen there, are like someone might walk by a control room and hear something and, you know, it could be, well, I remember Kid Rock heard some guy doing kind of a, uh, country rap kind of thing. And, and Bob Kid Rock went in and said, Hey, you want me to rap on it for you? And he did. And, you know, you just go, I love when this happens. Mm. Yeah. Sure. If, magic. If you're mixing a song and you find some bass mistake and there wasn't anything you could cut and paste and fix it with. I'll guarantee you there's a bass player, a great one within 20 yards of you, you know, so go next door and ask if you can borrow the bass player for 10 minutes, you know, it's great. I love that. Right. 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 Uh, it's, cool. it's just a, a, a wonderful place. I believe to, to make music. Part of my problem is I'm a kind of emotionally crippled a little bit. And I can't stand the thought of anybody coming there and not being happy. And I overcompensate by having gear and spares and more gear and spares. And <laughs> I've got a little bit of the roadie mentality. So I got to have spares. And when you have nine rooms and a rental department, I can't buy one of anything. You know, if we have one of something, it's probably cause there's only one, you know, <laughs> we, yeah. We need multiples of everything because you never know when you may need it. That's the mm -hmm. key. And the way I look at all the gear and mics and all that, really, they're colors on the palette. I just want to give the artist, the producer, and the engineer every color on the palette so that they can get the record they want to get. You know, to me, it's, it has nothing to do with anything except that and right so far so good you know somehow we're still here i was gonna say i don't hear many people complaining that for lack of equipment um that you, no. you know you, got, you guys have a lot no of i mean i i would think you you have probably one of the nicest facilities in the entire country yeah well you know what i put it up i I'd, I'd enter a contest with anybody else because i believe yeah. in, in what we're yeah. doing and the integrity, the floating slabs, the electricity, the great grounding, the fact that we bought the transformers on telephone poles from the city so that no one else could tap off them. You know, that's important to me. Wow. I think our electricity is three to five dB quieter than anyone else in town. And we have this 2,000 pound filter, you know, for our tech power mm -hmm. that just makes it better. And we used a shitload of Equitech, you know, balance power. I mean, we, you know, it's that last 5% that kind of kills you in a way it costs the same <laughs> as the first 95%. And, but you know what? <laughs> I don't care. I just want to get it done. You know, makes you want it better. perfect. Yep. I do. I you do. want it. Everything perfect, which I love. Well, yeah, I'd love that. yeah but but I don't micromanage people. I don't, you know, I also am aware that you can kill yourself with perfection in a way, you know, um, I have a friend, a buddy of mine that loves to collect gear. He's more of a collector. I'm more of a user. So I don't really care what it looks like. If it sounds great, then I want it. I don't care right. if it's, you know, the meat one meters broken, whatever. I have a great tech staff. We'll get it fixed. I'm not worried, you know, and you know, he bought a mic from me once and the power supply, the rubber feet on the power supply. There was one screw different from the other three. And he really wanted the original screw in that foot, you know, on the power <laughs> supply. And, you know, this shit will drive you insane. And, I mean, it really could, you know. But fortunately, we had more than one of those mics, and we went to another power supply and took an original screw out, put it in his, and everybody's happy. <laughs> I don't care if the feet are glued on. You know, I don't yeah, care. Yeah, sure. That's know? not the important yeah. part. No, but some people <laughs> yeah, some people have that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, Cooper. they do. 
I joined inside Blackbird Studio and highly recommend it. So, oh. um, yeah. Thank so you. Make sure you guys check it out and uh, subscribe to it. Um, yeah, the videos, I was watching a clip of uh, Tom Bukovac. Uh, oh, Tom, yeah, yeah. We, I love Tom. Oh, Tom. We're he's been really good show. friends. Tom's and, you know, it's guy. funny. During the, the pandemic, he, he, you know, took his phone, went in the garage play guitar and talked about shit yeah and all of a sudden he has i don't know a hundred thousand i don't know eighty thousand at least followers he he just but he it's because he's tom bukovac you know and we've made a lot of videos with tom as a matter of fact we were talking earlier the Co cooper time cube and the echo wreck we, we did a, a video on five different tape delays or delays for guitar players and uh Tom did those with me. I think our most watched video so far might be Tom uh, basically building a song from scratch. And this video is like two hours plus. And people have watched that as much as any other video we have. But when I talk to Tom, I want to find out things that people need. Like, how do I not get screwed when I buy a guitar? I mean, I, I want to know that. Because I have a lot of guitars because, well, that's the other oddity about Blackbird. We have tons of band gear, you know, again, colors on the palette. But, you know, we've got 80 guitar amps and, I don't know, 65 drum kits and 160 snares. And, and it wow. sounds ludicrous. And it is. But we don't own a dud in the bunch. They're all just different flavors. And fortunately, they don't get cheaper either. They keep going up in going price. Up. It's ridiculous, man. You know, That's... fortunately, we have a couple of Dumbles and Alexander died, you know, not that long ago. And Dumble Amps are now selling. Well, they were ridiculous before he died. Mm -hmm. And now they're insane. You know, the cost of <laughs> I'm just Which glad I got one or two when I could. I've oh, got yeah. a 100 watt overdrive special. Do you have one? no <laughs> I, oh i i started to interrupt sorry sorry no, no, okay. no wait, but we've what, got freeman you amps <laughs> he's got freeman amps <laughs> oh yeah you, have freeman amps? Oh, you got freeman amps? yes more than okay. one actually oh we got a lot of high gain stuff we've got you know i've got a 59 tweed deluxe that is one of my favorite amps buddy guy always uses that amp when he records there We've got a 64 Vibrolux that's pretty great. We've got a bunch of AC-30s from the uh, early 60s, too, with Top Boost, I think. You know, Great. We have a stupid amount of band gear. And you know what? I don't care. I just I, I want to make people happy. And if I can give them something that works and maybe even expands their horizons, hallelujah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, they might get did. in the studio and find that, you know, the amp that they thought was going to work is not going to be the right thing. And you you have something it's better. Absolutely true. Yeah. You yeah. know, we, we've had, I've had sessions where we've set up three different drum kits, mic'd them all, and the drummer moves from kit to kit to kit depending on the song. I love that. Yeah, sure. You know? Yeah. And beautiful. I'm just glad we have the ability to do that. It, it's, it's, ridiculous money you know uh, it, it's hard it's hard to keep up when you when you have a studio and, and you want it to be great and you know what every year we hang on and every year that goes by i owe a little less usually because we've made our loan payments that year you know and hopefully get a little equity or whatever but i love music and i hate the business that's where my head is you know <laughs> yeah, it's a tough business it is. Tough, that's, it that's is. That's for sure. But if you love it, that's what matters. You know, you don't have a choice. I really believe <laughs> there's a certain percentage of the population that in, I've said this on inside Blackbird a number of times, probably, but in the womb, either the mother's heartbeat, the sound of her voice, the blood flow, whatever gets in our DNA and music is in our DNA and we have to work in music to be happy. And I'd yeah. argue that, you know. 
I can't imagine doing anything else. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, Modern Ventures, thank you for the super chat. Uh, John, what made you choose uh -huh. ATC for Blackbird? Uh, okay. Your thoughts on modern DSP based amplifiers, monitors. I have tried most $20,000 plus, $20, plus monitors and found only ATCs to have accurate mids, air depth, and feel of real instruments and vocals. Well, I'll tell you what made me buy the first ATCs I bought. I, I didn't know that many studio people. I knew people that had worked with Martina, of course, but I, I didn't know. I knew five or six engineers that are respected and, and I trust their opinion. And when I called them about buying big speakers, cause like I heard most of the time that the only reason the bigs are in there is to impress the record company or whatever. But no, no one out of the six people I talked to had anything bad to say about ATC. And I'd had my eye on them, but I had never heard a pair and I bought them and I fell in love with them. And now I've learned them and I love them all the more. And every time we expanded or added a room, I bought more ATC speakers. <laughs> I mean, our, our, our uh, Atmos rig in the C room has 21 ATC speakers in it, you know? Wow. I trust, I trust those speakers. I love them. And I've learned them, which it's not a big learning curve. You know, what you hear is what you get. And I'm sure we've helped ATC sell a shitload of speakers. I hope we have. Because when I go to get more, I always beg them for a better deal because we, you know, we have them in all our rooms right so you're yeah just, you're, you're a walking advertisement for them <laughs> well you know and generally speaking i don't know if i've ever really endorsed much of anything but because you know everyone has their own opinion about stuff and i respect everybody's opinion you know you do what you do and i'll do what i do if it's different i don't you know doesn't bother me mm -hmm. but i really mm -hmm. trust atcs and by the number of listening parties we've had at blackbird i think other people trust them too you know i like the 300s the bigs the best you know mm -hmm. they're my my favorite but we in the atmos room we we only have three i think um 300s across left right center you know and then we have 12 of the 100s and then we have six subs that are all atc i i think they're expensive you know come on guys make it a little <laughs> cheaper be a little less greedy. Please help us. Help us, you know. <laughs> but you know what else? The people at ATC are really great to work with. And and uh, Ben, one of them, will come in and he knows a lot about room acoustics. And he's helped us with a bass trap in one room or this and the other, whatever. I trust his ears a lot. But now, after 21 years with ATCs, I trust mine, too. Right. All right. You know, That's like right. a, an NS10 Yamaha is not going to win any speaker awards, probably, you know, and they obviously they don't nope. make them right now either. But when you learn that pair of speakers and you know that what you're hearing here is going to translate to your car, to your home, to radio, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, all oh, you yeah. need and to know. NS10 is, is awesome for that if once you. Sure. If you make it, if you make it sound good on an NS10, it'll it sound good on anything. everywhere, <laughs> mm -hmm. especially 200 to 1K for mm -hmm. me with an NS10, because that is a very, very critical part of everything I hear. You know that mm -hmm. 200 to 1K when it's right, everything's pretty bright. I don't like fake high end. I don't, you know. Some of the DSP process stuff, oh, you know, the, I shouldn't say it probably, but the Sony C800G, I never liked that mic. I just felt yeah. like it was hypey on the, on the top end and not natural. Mm. 
And we did a video on in Blackbird about it. And, you know, I wasn't very nice, but, you know, we're not doing this. It's, it's basically, you know, we're showing you gear and we're talking about it. And if we like it, great. And if we don't, yeah, you know. Yeah, it, yeah, it sure. is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Right. Plus, uh, the 800G is almost 11 grand now, and that's a little high, you know? <laughs> that's pricey. Especially for something you don't uh, like. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. That's why I only have two of them. Yeah. Anyway. Only two. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, Patrick, if people you. want that, uh patrick thanks for the super chat john are you still planning on filming a cooper time cube video with tom Bu bukovac we have filmed that video and it'll yeah. be out i'm sure in the next two or three months i'm sure we release two new videos every week i want people to get a hundred new videos a year and there's over 250 i think that we launched with so That's if we great. add a hundred new ones a year Hopefully people won't complain. Plus any feedback we get from people that are signed up. If they, if I get, you know, an email or whatever, um, please make a video about X, Y, Z. Well, we'll probably make it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Sure. That's great. That's great. Uh, Philip Aspie says not to divert, but John, your wife was instrumental to me coming to love country music. She's a treasure, such a gift. I'll be right back. You and I have that in common. When I met <laughs> Martina, I knew nothing about country music. And she didn't really know the Beatles. So Really? Oh. Yeah. You know, it's funny. She I mean, she grew up on a farm and her dad had a country band, and that girl is a walking encyclopedia of the history of country music, I can tell you that. She wow. learned that from her dad, you know, and a family band and all that stuff. And uh, I got to her teach her more about stuff I'd listened to growing up, which is basically rock, you know. And back when rock was pop music, you know. Right. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. I, I She really taught me about the art of country music. And let me tell you, it is art. Mm -hmm. Any great example of any genre of music, I'm probably going to like it, you know, when it's great because they make great country and they make crap country. They make great <laughs> rock and they make right. crap rock, you know? And so I like great. You yeah. Know, that's, that's what trips my trigger. I, I, I love great music. Yeah. And that's why. Martina and I, she, 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 and she turned me into a lyric person also. I used to not oh, yeah. pay attention to the lyrics. I was all about, you know, the guitars and keys right, right. And melody and drums and all the stuff. But now she's a hundred percent a lyric person. And so am I hmm. because those lyrics help change the world, you know, hopefully for the better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Jay Cariega, thanks for the super chat. Uh, does John know Vic Gabney? Vic taught my recording engineer class at Hillsboro High in Nashville in the early 80s. Wow. That's you cool. know, I don't. There's no. so many people I don't know. So many people I wish I knew, but I just stay busy and it doesn't, it doesn't, give me as much opportunity to meet people as I'd like. Um, my daughter just graduated from Hillsborough high school, by the way, my youngest oh, wow. this yeah. year. Yes. Last year. I, well, actually the graduation is the 23rd of May coming up soon. Oh, well, <laughs> you and I, you were in the same, same boat. My son's graduating as well from high school. Great. So, yeah. Great. Heading off to college. So, Yeah. I've got a 28, 25, and 17-year-old daughter, all three girls, of course. And unfortunately, it doesn't get that much easier after they get out of high school. But It doesn't get easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have I have a 25-year-old daughter, so I know. Oh, yeah. Then we can, yeah. I got one well, of those have, and a 28. I have 30 and 28 and 26 oh, daughters. Man. 
You know, oh, the God. 26 year old just had a baby, so I'm a grandpa, a grandpa. now. <laughs> Man, I still, I'm I don't still know how I feel about that, that one. <laughs> grandpa Dave. All my friends that are granddads or whatever say it's the greatest thing that ever happened. That's all I keep hearing about it. Well, I always say it's the greatest thing that ever happened is because we can go see the baby and then, leave. <laughs> and then also leave <laughs> without the get baby. Get them all jacked up on sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you get to enjoy it, oh. then leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's yes. great. You're right, though, man. Uh, so it's weird. It's weird as you get older because I will never let the old man in if I can avoid yeah. it. You know, like I said, I'm never retiring. Never. Yeah, I, I won't. I'll die. I don't imagine the I console. am either. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we love what we get to do. So why would we retire? You know, it's just another great reason to get out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I love it, man. I, I love it. Yeah. Uh, Spartan special custom deluxe. Thanks for the, the suggestion. So, uh, John, can you give us kind of a rundown of some of your favorite pieces of gear that you have at the, sure. at the studio? Oh and man. Keep... Well, the That's Cooper time cube, the Benson echo wreck, those are two things I love. You know, we've got some 670 and 660 Fairchilds. Those are great. I think they're so much money. I think it's too much money that people ask for those. But they are great. But, you know, my favorite uh, compressor on bass guitar, and I use it live and studio, is the retro. Uh, the retro, it's a reissue of the stay level. Mm -hmm. I love that. Love that compressor on bass. I love, um, you know, microphone wise, I'd have to say it's between the U 47 and the two fifty one telefunken. Really? You know, it, it goes you, go wrong two either. <laughs> you can't, you really yeah, can't. They're good. Guy mics. Jesus. Oh, Amazing. But you know, six sixty sevens don't suck, but I'll tell you what, for the money, an SM seven or a fifty seven, no problem. Yeah. I'm uh, with me. Yeah, absolutely. I love those mics, you know. We did a video on inside where we mic'd a kit with an unlimited budget. You know, we had sixty sevens on the tom, C twelve on the hi hat, C twelve on the bottom snare. I think I used KU three A's on overheads and c12 simply because we were going to compare them and uh then we did a video on miking drums on a budget and for less than 2500 bucks at the time you could own this daw six sm57s and even the mic stands and the sound we got with the inexpensive way kind of really pissed me off because it was way too close to the to the expensive <laughs> mic sound it's that you know it's that last little bit that right. makes them better yeah. and you know i understand i'm not a mic snob at all i'll use anything you know what mic you want what's closest let's try that you know i i think it's wise to always use different microphones i love an sm7 you know, Martina's, yeah. we've, you know, her main vocal chain, which is out of control, is a 251 Telefunken, but it's serial number 584, which that was a Friday on a three day weekend or something. It just got a special mm. mojo. Um, but we've done fixes. We were on the road and there was a f vocal fix she had to do. We got an SM7 with a Telefunka mic pre, a V76, it sounded so close mm -hmm. and way less money, as you could imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, uh, right. Favorite EQs would probably, I love the Motowns. They're a different kind of EQ, to be honest. You know, I love Neve and API EQs in general. I love GMLs, the Massenburg ones. I'm, I'm not real, you know, most EQs are pretty great. We've got some old APSIs that people really enjoy also, which is kind of odd. Uh, 
Mm. Um, other stuff. Let me think. What about, what about amps? Oh, that Dumble, that 100 watt overdrive special, forget it. Every <laughs> great guitar player that I've brought it in for them to try out, they play and they go, wow. From Jeff Beck to Dan Huff to, you know, Bukovac. Mm -hmm. That amp just, it's just, I think Dumble talked to God about electricity and helped figure it out you know i don't know <laughs> yeah. it's it's pretty great but the 59 tweed deluxe it's great too you know favorite kit gretch round badge from the 60s oh i'm sorry the 50s the 50s round badges which are three ply and mm. uh the 22 13 16 man that's to me what drums sound like or should and, uh, we have uh, a question here. Uh, is the Dumble that you, or the other Dumble you have a high plate Skyliner? I have no fucking clue. That's <laughs> what, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you my text number. He could tell you. <laughs> Me, I'm not a techie kind of guy. I'm just really not. But it's well, You great said you had two I, of them, right? You have two, though, yes. right? So what's the yes. other one? If you have a, oh, we, al we also have a... Uh, uh, it was called the Tweedledee mod to a 57 Fender Deluxe. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And, you know, I don't know what he did. It was five grand years ago, but it's sure, it's sure loud and proud and, you know, five grand. Right. Yeah. Dave, for the mod. You got to start <laughs> charging a little higher for your mods, I think. Five apparently, appar apparently i've always said that <laughs> <laughs> you know for hard rock the friedman is hard to beat i mean it's ridiculous newer amps seem to address more options you know just different ways to drive it it's it's crazy um but we well, I, you know i, I love always had you know like in, in for my amps i've always had a um a big background in vintage amps, but sure. it that went into it along with adding more modern features. But they're still a little rooted in the old amps. You know what I mean? It's not oh it's man, not too modern. You know, and it's uh, and that's just the sound in my head. So yes, that's well, you're the same kind of artist that anybody who makes music is. You know, that's what it takes. Well, I guess I need you know, to come down and do a video with you. <laughs> you yeah, definitely you <laughs> need to come to Blackbird, please. Yeah, yeah. Set aside about three or four hours. I'll give you the whole tour. I'm going to do it, that one day. Great. I'll, I'll yeah. meet you out there, Dave. Um, yeah. Roger, Dad, this is a good timely question. John, please describe the details you like about the Friedman amps in the studio. And awesome. You know, the, the distortion, the... Here's what I love a clean sound out of it. And I love a rock sound out of it, you know, and I'm not saying clean can't rock, but Freeman's go loud. And they're like, when you're really like, when I went to Mike Simmons, who's runs our rental department, but he's a guitar player and a great one. And we were gonna, we, we needed three or four different high gain amps. He goes, well, Friedman first. And then I think we did a, like a Mesa boogie or something. And there's some custom uh, guitar amp builders in Nashville um, that we uh, bought amps from also. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I wish I was a guitar player because I would know more about it than I do right now. Generally, awesome. from an engineering point of view, I know I'm going to get a great sound out of you can get a great sound out of a lot of different amps, but each one has its own character. And when you're, when you're, you know, when you start pushing a Friedman, it just, the rubber, when, it's, when the rubber meets the road, it ain't scared. And I like that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, like you know I'm, it's a great I'm serious. Mm -hmm. Well, it's true. You yeah. know, it's just, and I don't know why I would like a Gretsch fifties round batch kit, three ply, whatever, 
I don't, I can't tell you exactly why, what the difference between that and the sixties that are six fly or a Craviato or a Yamaha or, you know, a, you know, you know, it just camcos, whatever, whatever you're doing, you know, I just, there's certain sounds that must hit, that kind of like when I first heard the Beatles, I said it hit me in the DNA. Yeah. And it did. And I don't know why. And I don't want to know why. I want to keep a little mystery there. Mm. I don't want to know that when you flat the seventh, that turns me on, but it does, you know. When that I was taking sense. piano lessons and, you know, a flatted seventh, I went, oh, shit. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't know what it is about the blues, but the blues affects, I feel like everyone mm -hmm. or most people making music, you know, have had an influence from all that. Mm -hmm. Dave Stewart, Great. one of my favorite people on earth, the guy from the Eurythmics, you know, Dave, mm -hmm. I've made a lot of records with him. Um, and he went down to Mississippi and shot a film about the blues and, you know, it's just fascinating. I love people that go the extra step, you know, mm -hmm. and it just makes me happier. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Um, speaking of people who go the extra step, uh, rerun, rewind electric. Uh, what's going on, James? How are you? Um, no particular question. Just enjoying the show and grateful the, for the excellent content and detailed information. Love you guys. Hey, man. Love you, too. Thank you Thank so you. much. Uh, your Thank pickups you. are fantastic. Um, I put... Where's my last Paul? Oh, it's hanging up there. I put your creme brulee pickup in my last Paul. And, dude, oh, my God. It's not going out of there. I love that pickup. It's fantastic. Um, and I just threw in into my... Uh, what was the other one? I just threw... Oh, into the... Into the V. Over there, back there. I just threw in the, the VH2. So great stuff. So thank you so much. Uh, I haven't put mine in yet. So <laughs> yeah, but thank you for the pickups and guys check out Re Re rewind electric, uh, great pickups. Um, Jay Stevens. Uh, thanks for the quick turnaround on my amp, Dave, looking forward to hearing it. Excellent. Oh. All right. No problem. Uh, and let's Dave, see, we're uh, going to have to get together and, design a blackbird amp of some sort okay i'm serious that sounds fun i i would love i that. like the idea let's do it yeah man we uh, you know we just we're all gear queer here you know and at blackbird we are too and and you know just having options that's important you know yeah Great. And being able Sounds to fun. take what's in your head and make a record out of it. That's, mm -hmm. that's oh, yeah. the key. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Um, let's see. We got Philip Aspie. Thanks for the super chat. Curious about Atmos. Have you seen an uptick in demand for that? I'm old school two, two channel uh, guy. It seems interesting, but don't really understand it. I don't know if anyone really understands that most or Sony 360 or whatever, you know, immersive type technology you're using. You know, it is amazing to sit in an accurate control room and hear multi-channel, either Atmos, Sony 360, DTS maybe. Um, but the end game for all those companies is basically headphones, the stereo headphones you already own. We have a 9.1.6 room and a 7.1.4 room. Hmm. And when you hear those three numbers, the first number is basically eye level speakers. At eye level, we have nine speakers, three in front, three down each side, behind you, beside you, in front of you. And then six up in the, well, three down each side. That makes our nine. Point one is a substand. 
So if you're sending one sub send, we have six subs, but it's only 0.1 because they're all getting the same signal. And then 0.6 are the speakers above your head and they're front beside you and behind you. And with, with the you know software, the Dolby software, you can basically place a sound. Okay, you can do a layout and then you, uh, you have what are called objects. And on the video screen, they look like little round balls. And you can assign any sound to an object. It could be a reverb return, a vocal, a guitar part. It could be a snare bottom mic. It could be a background, whatever. And you can float those around the room. And it really is, when it's done right, it's fucking amazing. And it is. I walk out of our Atmos rooms or our immersive rooms saying, screw stereo, man. But I have two ears and stereo is pretty great. And I, you know, I always, always listen in stereo, generally speaking. But I love the immersive. The end game is headphones for the the ones you already own, where through a bunch of physics voodoo, they make sounds appear as if they're behind you, in front of you, on top of you, left, right, wherever. And wow. um, I think it, it's pretty great for music, but I think gaming and VR will probably be used that will be used for those as much as anything you know mm -hmm. but i'm mm -hmm. glad you know the demand the demand for dolby or immersive in general hit a peak when apple announced that all 75 million of their songs are going to be in some kind of immersive type style and then the label started spending money to get the catalogs done and and everything new and for more than a few years netflix hulu i think hulu um amazon apple anytime you deliver music to them you have to have an immersive version you know so that made it have to happen and wow i had probably, no idea i'm such an old dog know, i had no idea. probably <laughs> three years ago there were four Atmos rooms in America. We had one at the time and universal had the other three, one at Capitol and two in Nashville. And now there are probably a thousand Atmos rooms that people have built at home or wherever, because the labels are not spending they're spending as little as they possibly can to get Atmos mixes done. And most guys are working or girls are working in the box and doing it that way. We have two or three engineers that will mix 10 songs at home and then bring them in. Use one of our, we have two Atmos rooms. Now we'll use one of the rooms to just fine tune and tweak their mixes because they can hear more accurately at our place than they can at ours. Mm -hmm. And I get it. Right. You know, we That's still cool obviously, that do... we brought Making... Sony and Dolby in to, to help yeah. us with the install and tuning and all that happy stuff. So That's awesome. It, that sounds cool. It, it's fun. Uh, Jay, another question. Thank you. John, what is your opinion of tannoy pbm 6.5 monitors you know i don't know those monitors i wish i did i mm. feel like i mean i've heard lots of different monitors i feel like i know there's a couple you know i, I know ns10s i know atcs you know i know a couple of models of the atoms i know a, a few of the barefoot the krks but I don't know, I don't have the experience with Tannoy's that, that I wish I had, but I don't have at this point. Okay. But if I hear about a pair, I'll check them out, man. Cool. Uh, Modern Vintage, again, thank you. John, can you discuss your favorite converters and best tips you've learned on studio design and acoustics over the years from Ben at ATC and others? Thank you. 
You know, I'm thoroughly convinced that about 50% of having a great room is luck. And I've gotten <laughs> one or two physicists to admit that because I don't know how many billions of reflections are in an average room. But, and of course, there are designs you can follow and they should work. Some are great, some aren't. There's still enough gray area that when you get a great room, you still feel a little lucky, you know? And uh, Ben really gave us kind of, or showed us an example of when you need a low end diffuser. You know, the longer you work in the studio, the more in tune you get with, with each room or with, you know, when it comes, when you record tone is such a critical part of making a great record. Um, your hearing really improves in, in areas where, you know, it's really easy to pick the high out of a mix or, you know, listen to the ghost notes on the snare drum that you normally you might not have even noticed. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You have to pay attention to everything and everything works together. And I just kind of call it weaving basically where you take these sounds and you, you know, you put them together the way they fit the best and, you know, great players they do all sorts of cool shit when they're playing that you may not realize there may be a little piano thing and the acoustic guitar answers him next you know next uh four bars or whatever and um you really can hone in on on uh what everybody's doing and why it works and i don't really ever i don't like analyzing and now, when I listen to my own mixes, you're so in the middle of it, you know, you're just looking for that right balance. Because at the end of the day, we're balancing engineers. That's what we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, I prefer tracking to mixing. You know, I really do. I love the creation of the song, not necessarily letting it graduate from college with me. You know, I, don't, mm -hmm. I love tracking in general. And uh, it's kind of like, you know, I always say crafts is like the stock market, except really fast. When you're tracking a record and you get a song and you love this song and you know you're not going to hear it for six to 12 months on the radio because of the machine and the process and all the BS you have to go through. That's frustrating to me, but I love tracking. I love that we went in that morning and we now have two songs that could change the world. That's a great, great feeling. It's kind of like having a kid, you know? Yeah. It didn't exist two hours ago. Right. And now exactly. Yeah. Now it's here. And now it, it can be here forever, I guess. Right. You know? Yeah. That's the amazing part about it. Right. Yeah. Converters yeah. watch inside Blackbird. I've got a guy doing two or three, <laughs> videos on comparing converters and he goes way down the rabbit hole generally you know uh i don't want to i don't know you know we, we i've got 80 channels of burl i like burls a lot although on a scope they may not look as good as something else i like the sound of them mm. i like transformers you know i like tubes mm. burls don't have tubes but they do have transformers um, a lot of people are making pretty great, you know, converters these days, but I'm a pretty big fan of, uh, of Burl's, but those are, we own probably 10 different companies, types of converters. And what I do is I'd call my favorite three engineers and talk to them and see what they tell me. And then I would probably, whatever they said. I'd listen to and whatever somebody else said I'd listen to and whatever somebody else said I'd listen to and then make my own decision, you know, based on that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, dollar store rock star. What's going on? Thanks for the super chat. 
how about a live tone talk show in nashville at blackbird oh that would be cool. i'm in uh awesome i live in town and would gladly buy a ticket uh bring jake and warren too <laughs> jakey lee and warren d martini he's referring to uh yeah. They don't live anywhere near Nashville. No. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, Man, I'd love, if you guys want to come in and do a show, I'd love it. Let me know well, when. I'll. My cousin lives in Franklin, by the way. So ah, That's close. Yeah. That's yeah, real close. close. Yeah, I, I told him I need to come by. So, Dave, get, get your butt out there. We'll go out there. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fun. Yeah. Where do you live, uh, Dave? Uh, Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah yeah now i'm in florida so oh yeah not, not too far yeah you're close mark yeah, yeah closer closer, closer yeah. close enough um modern vintage oh man you're on fire tonight uh john since you're not a guitarist but an en engineer can you tell us what you hear or identify as the signature sound for a marshall high watt vox fender mesa diesel also for guitar cabs and speaker. That's a lot to ask. That's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's a big a ask. Lot to ask. <laughs> <laughs> you you it, know, everyone has their own way of describing the differences between all those. And there are differences between all those. I don't want to bore everybody because I don't feel like I'm qualified enough to, uh, cause I haven't played guitars through those things. But when I hear guitars, of course, the sound of every amp, depends who's holding the guitar really you know and any amp is going to sound like that player when they play it so it's really hard for me to to say you know marshall's you know they're kind of a little bit in our dna they've been around forever we've got a couple of super leads you know they're great yeah i i like the angst you know i like the you know with the marshall you can just you can get anger across pretty good you know mm. but i'm not saying that's better than anything else either the 67 super lead is pretty good that's the my favorite probably mm. and you know I wish I had more time to play with the guitars, but you know, and drums. I wish it, you know, I wish I could sit down and play something, but sorry, I can't. I can record the fuck out of you, you know. I will. <laughs> I'll record you, you know. But you know, That's awesome. uh, Michael Nielsen, what's going on, Michael? Hope you're doing well. Make sure everybody checks out Michael Nielsen's cha channel amazing demos um cool. and pl he he's his playing is just so so great um let's see brian galbraith uh thanks for the super chat always a great show guys john can you get close to neve to a neve console sound using analog preamps and addda rack hardware into a cpu or is the console the only way to get that sound well, not doing a conversion would help <laughs> would help a lot, but a great Neve channel through the right converters, I think, can get you a great sound. Like when I brought up earlier about the two Neve channels that Kit made um, of blackbird neve stuff i sat there on the console and went back and forth and got confused about which was which and um especially maybe the 1073 which i've had a lot of engineers call me and uh say it's their new favorite channel strip and and part of it is the way you use it when you open the attenuator and you get some of that analog sounding distortion, that's a beautiful thing. If you can, if you can get that right in a, in a plug-in, mm -hmm. um, I use the Neve 31105 plug-in 
on the road even i we, you know we unfortunately we have to have a separate computer for it because for the first time in my life i'm using a digital console instead of my analog uh, paragon and part of the reason is is that we are playing places where that paragon won't fit uh, probably 20 percent of the time and that's so frustrating and it's big and heavy but i'm using a yamaha pm10 or a pm7 and i say that's usually the least painful digital experience i've had that's the way i describe it hmm. you know and when i have a really good show with a, a digital desk I'll still sit there and go, you know, I bet with the Paragon, it would have been better. And it probably would have. But, you know, the Neve, the stereo bus of the Neve needs to be programmed into that plug-in or, you know, so that you have that sound in a plug-in already and you're able to... uh capitalize on what a neve really sounds like it's really in there so i've never tried i don't think i've ever digitally converted a couple of neve i mean well i have i have done that because we have a lot of outboard channels of neve at the studio i think 100 plus and when you go in an API room and you want four channels of Neve, we'll bring them in or 10 or whatever you want. And they go through the converters. Now I've never sat there and compared that to what it sounds like. If I put that same input into a Neve console and heard the output. So mm -hmm. I can't really answer that question. <laughs> Makes Sorry. Sense. Now, are you, I'm sorry, pardon my ignorance if I'm asking a dumb question here, but are you recording mostly digitally from the board or are you going to tape? Both, but okay. digital has spoiled everyone. You know, if I record digital and I do mostly record digital, it'll be at 96 or 192. I like the higher sample rates. We did a video again on Inside Blackbird where we recorded. <laughs> we took a four-piece band, guitar, bass, drums, B3. We recorded into Pro Tools. Uh, we recorded eight tracks into Pro Tools at 192.24. We record simultaneously. We recorded eight tracks to a two-inch 24, a two-inch 16 and a two inch eight hmm. and let me tell you the difference will blow your mind i never want to record without a two inch eight again ever <laughs> I was awesome. say, it's, got, it's got to be a you big can, difference you can, i think you can download that audio and listen to it in your you know in your own room and see what you think but god it just gets holographic almost i mean it's you know it gets wider deeper and taller mm -hmm. and the low end of course we did it at 15 so we cheated we got a nice low end bump you know but honestly the 192 24 and the two inch 24 pretty close the two inch 16 was better noticeably better than those two and the two inch eight was incredible Wow. Unless you hear it and you hear something different, you might like Pro Tools better for all I know, you know, but yeah. I really liked the two inch eight. Makes you sense. <laughs> it does make sense. <laughs> uh, John DeShane, thank you. Hope you're doing well. Uh, he says, hey, John, any suggestions for some good tracking headphones? Yeah, a pair of ATC 300s. They'd be like Texas headphones, a little large, but... I'm kidding. Um, I generally <laughs> use, uh, you know, whatever's around usually. Um, I don't do a lot with headphones, so I don't have a personal favorite. There's uh, 
there's some audio technicas, some shores, some oh god, even Foss text that I that I like. You know, I've got a couple of the frou frou, you know, like those wooden ones. I'm trying to think of the name of them right now, but they're expensive and and they're okay, but the low end, eh, not good enough for me. I like usually a closed ear headphone and you know, I like lows, mids and highs that are balanced properly. And you put on a pair of headphones, you can tell, oh, this is, you know, like the Sony 7560s or whatever are bright. They just are. Others might be better balanced. That's probably where I'd go. You know, but uh beast f u what's up man you got the super chat in and it worked good for you proud, <laughs> of, proud of you man um hey guys dave do different tubes have a sound 6l6 versus el34 oh, or do you, yes. do you design a circuit around a tube to have whatever sound you want well um yes and no um it depends it depends <laughs> uh <laughs> you'd be surprised how much like for instance if i took one of my amps and put six l6s in it versus el34s you'd be surprised how minimal the difference is um but there's little subtleties like uh, generally an EL34 is, has a little more of a scoop to it than a than a 6L6 does uh it also has 10 uh, tends to have a bit more compression to it and it uh, it also depends on how hard you're going to drive this tube that's the other thing so so if it's an old vintage amp and you're you're just you know smashing it and turning it up really loud uh that's totally different ball game than if it's a master volume amp at a relatively quiet volume uh you're you're not going to hear the, the the tube so much at that point um so it's hard you know yes certain tubes have certain sort of characteristics like a 6550 tube or a kt88 tube is tons of headroom uh, you know, you put it in one of my amps and it's like really solid sounding. Like it's like a brick wall kind of, you know, it just really has, uh, there, there's no, there's still give, but there's no, the, the base stays much more solid, you know, than, than say an EL34. Um, is it radically different in tonality? Maybe not radically. So there's my answer. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Jason Tong. What's up, Jason? Oh, he's in the States. So, hey, Jason. Uh, nice. Is to it watch culture shock? <laughs> <laughs> You're in LA and then you went to Indiana. Oh, Indiana. That's very different. Very different than Australia. <laughs> That's for sure. You must have my bu our booking agent, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't uh, worry. Uh, Let's see. Um, going to Nashville for a show next Friday. Where should we eat? Uh, check out Hattie B's and wait in line there for about three hours. <laughs> I'll tell you where to go. Go to drive 10 miles south or not even 10 to Franklin, Tennessee, and go to Mojo's Tacos. They have puffy shells. And to me, that's the food version of crack it's the best okay well that ever. sounds good yeah i'm gonna have to <laughs> yeah. what's it called again mojo's tacos. tacos mojo's, mojo's tacos. tacos yes okay i want to ask my cousin because he's right there oh do okay tell him they're in the factory the factory oh, of franklin there. yeah he's been there. i i went in there for that frank they have a nice guitar store in there too oh but, you know what i I always do the curbside pickup, so I don't. I never go in the factory. Oh, really? I may have to. Yeah, they haven't. Uh, well, I, I, I think it's still there. Uh, it was a nice shop. They had all kinds of custom shop vendor, custom shop. But you know, if you don't play, I can understand why you don't run in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> makes sense. Um, let's see. 
Oh, you know, there was a question earlier. Uh, here it is, Scott C. What one piece of gear would you grab in a fire, John? Oh, man. Well, if I was strong enough to carry it, that Neve console. But I highly <laughs> doubt I could. <laughs> That's I a good answer. To get <laughs> one foot off the edge, you know, off the floor. Um, something small. U47, number 193. And Telefucking 251, number 584. And the Echo Rick. And the Echo Rick. I'd try to make two trips if I could, you know? And the Cooper. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. Because the Cooper tank is made out of wood. It it would burn for sure, you know? Yeah. I've never heard of a Cooper time cube. I have to look that up. Is there a Well, it's a wooden box. Yeah, they they make plugins of it, I'm sure, but they don't sound the same. We did did that in our uh, breakdown on the Cooper time cube, but it's a wooden box probably 30 inches by 30 inches by eight or 10 wide. And it's got two garden hoses inside it. And there's a speaker on each end of the garden on each of the two garden hoses and a mic at the other end. And one's a 16 millisecond delay and one's a 14 millisecond delay. Or you can run one channel into the other externally. And it just does a lot of cool shit. We actually patched three in a row together because why not? Let's hear what this does. And then think about the Cooper Time Cube video. Joe Vitale came down and that guy knew more about a Cooper Time Cube than I did. And I learned two or three major things during that filming and heard some great stuff. And we had Bukovac playing guitar and using it live, you know, uh, during the the video. It's so great. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> no, it's awesome. I'll check that out. Um, yeah, I've never. I don't think I've ever heard one, so I'll have to check it out. Uh, let's see. Um, I think I've gone through all the questions. So tell us, John, um, how can people sign up? for inside blackbird go to insideblackbird.com and Mm -hmm. um it'll walk you right through it um you know i feel like anyone especially that wants to become a player an engineer producer that type uh stuff they will there's so much wisdom in this video presentation and We've talked to so many great people and I really feel like they could save themselves five years of, uh, you know, of, of working. You could learn to where you will be five years of head, ahead of everyone else that, you know, yeah. is where you are. So anyway, it, it's just got a lot of really useful knowledge and, you know, the artist interviews, they're called diaries. They're interesting. You know, I like to look at you're born. Now you're here. What happened? Right. You yeah. want to you, you start seeing a pattern to, to these people that succeed. Obviously, it takes talent, too. But they um, no one really they don't give up and they don't really have a plan B in general. You know, and I respect that and love it and don't give up man just if if this is what you really want to do move somewhere where the business is maybe that doesn't hurt Mm -hmm. it's hard Mm -hmm. to be in you know wyoming and want to be a great studio guitar player without being able to experience any of that you know yeah sure and there's a lot of people moving to Nashville. Oh God, uh, there yeah, are. It's crazy. It's like uh, I had a friend, Justin, Dave from uh, Two Notes, mm-hmm. just just moved out to Nashville too. Yeah, it's getting too crowded. Oh, last time I was there, I was like, ah, this isn't I, like I it won't used argue. to be. This isn't <laughs> like it used to be. This is getting a little much now. It's like Las Vegas. <laughs> Oh man! You know, well, that's that's Nashville, like downtown. Yeah, 
no yeah i mean yeah but but it didn't used to be that way i mean like 15 Mm -hmm. years ago or something it was it was pretty cool (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah it's like mardi gras seven nights a week downtown yeah oh yeah the locals the locals don't really go downtown i don't think you know i can't imagine yeah it's a real tourist it's the tourist trip you know yeah pretty much it is but it's fun if you go, yeah, I mean, you know, my wife and I and my son, we walked down there. We had we had ribs and watched the band play on Broadway, and you know, it's fun. It's a it's a cool experience. Yeah. I I, and you I don't I have wish to they, go in to hear them. <laughs> right, true. You can just walk down. You know, to go. it's loud. <laughs> true, true. It's a cool. I mean, it's a it's a cool experience. At least there's live music being played, and yes, you know, there is, and and that to me because that's a dying thing i mean in any any major city it's hard to even i forget who i was talking to recently uh but we were talking about bands uh, it might have been justin and um we we're saying that it's just it's just there's not a live music scene really and oh it was mike torn also uh not a big live music scene like in la you know right but thankfully nashville still has it or new york there's not oh really yeah new- we do austin yeah austin yeah but Mm -hmm. you're right there can't be enough music as far as i'm concerned yeah you know i I, agree i agree um let's see uh well guys i think i've gone through all the questions dave what do you think yeah i think i think we got most of it i think someone someone asked about the uh evh delay pedal have you tried it have i oh you know what Sure. yeah go ahead. What about, i was go gonna ahead. say we just got some of those at the studio. i gave one to my future son-in-law about for christmas well i i have to say that um i i was involved with this in some fashion uh in consulting on some of this and uh because i i had built eddie van halen's guitar rig and stuff so um well, God. So I, I yeah. was, I, I was, you know, cons- I was definitely consulted, and uh, they did it right. It sounds amazing. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, great. I'm glad to hear that. And I and can't. this is like direct A B comparisons to old the old ones, and and it captured the whole spirit of the whole thing, the whole little nuances of the old ones, which which. Which, which is awesome in a pedal, you know, a small pedal. It does actually, it'll do a lot more because it's MIDI and it'll do a bunch of stuff extra, you know. Oh, just the fact that it's built for but it wet, sounds dry, wet. Yeah. That's it's a, built. Yeah. I can't wait to get it. I just tore down my wet, dry, wet setup. And then literally like two days later, this is released. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to, I'll definitely, I ordered it immediately. So I can't wait to get it um but no i haven't played one yet so yeah uh no, it, yeah. it's it's great i can tell anyone just hands down it sounds just like the old two that were the particular two that were in ed's rack so that's awesome we're talking sde 3000s john oh yeah uh, rolling delays yeah um so yeah, guys, make sure you check out Blackbird inside Blackbird.com and uh Blackbird Studio and uh all the off- awesome stuff that they that they offer. John, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. Uh after, especially after working all day and then doing front of house and you must be wiped. So <laughs> you know, it won't take me long to go to sleep tonight, probably. <laughs> it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you guys and i'm hoping we end up doing an episode out of out of the studios one day that would be we definitely should do something yeah something it it fits right in with your your videos and stuff so yeah yeah that'd be great yeah well guys hang hang on um well you hang on john and dave while we while i say goodbye everybody I, i i don't know our next guest schedule so um just check out our social media stuff and look for it uh we'll probably do the next episode probably be an ask dave show or something well Uh, the next next one no it's probably going to be ron oh from uh rjm music rjm music that's right Mm -hmm. okay thank you yeah i'm sorry 
I was blanking out there for a second. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. Uh, all right. And everybody have a great weekend. And John, just hang on while we say goodbye. All right. And sure. Take care, everybody. Take care. Bye.